quick update regarding the four car jump tournament. The channel Diecast Racing TV is also running a simultaneous similar tournament alongside this one where the winner of that one will go up against the winner from this one in the ultimate finals for the four car jump. This year in 2022, races and fun has been known to one-up itself every single time it releases a new tournament, and this is no exception. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan, and I am proud to welcome you to the Four Car Jump Tournament. The first time that we really get to see a jump plus four cars, four lanes, all converging together in the end. This should be a good one. First group is gonna get going. And honestly, on top of that, we got Cobra, Geli, uh, Grarbox, Duck and Roll, and Tech Missile. On top of the excitement that we have here, we have both the Street Beasts and the X Racers getting out there today. A golden Duck and Roll is the chosen Duck and Roll for the Street Beast this time. And looks to be a little slow out of the gate, but nudges right by into third, maybe into second towards the end. And no, not fast enough. But we do get four races. Now it seems to me, the uh, the essence, or the structure even, of this particular tournament is that one car from each of those eight teams you saw at the top of the video will compete in each video. One from each team. And each round will Show every team, and by the end, we'll see who comes away, the leaders going to the finals. So uh, each team will represent, again, in each video. Tech Missile Cobra, Kelly Grarbox, Duck and Roll to read them once more. Switching lanes, Heat 2. See your points in the top left. Cobra is your strong racer right now, but eyes always on a Duck and Roll, because one thing they always say about Duck and Roll is never count them out. They also say quack. All right, here comes Cobra. Down a car. Oh, he spins out. I think that's the Kelly. He spun out. No, the Tech Missile. But still, the Tech Missile was able to maintain a lead. And, well, there's the Kelly coming in just behind. And I think the Duck and Roll edged out the Cobra for second place there. So we're going to look down the replay. But look here at the Cobra's maneuver. Trying to push past. Great um, defensive driving from behind, even. Or aggressive moving from behind. We'll see that here. If we can get a look at that turn. No, we don't get a look at the turn, but the duck and roll, I think, nudged by the Cobra there, and that's going to put some points up for the duck and roll. The Kelly was left behind. Let's move along here. Duck and roll, still in good straights, of course, to try to grab a win. Honestly, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. I can't deny I am a duck and roll fanatic over here. Quack, 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 and quack. All right, golden duck and roll out there. Looks like he's got a lead here. Here he goes. Many links ahead. Duck and roll through the jump. Smooth through the jump. Doesn't spin away. Out through the hairpin. Still with the lead. Starts to spin around. He's backwards. Cobra dodges to the inside. He's almost got it, but he does not. And I am excited. I'll let you guys sit with that right there. That was a duck and roll victory. The Kelly, not so good. Fell off and is going to pick up another one point. And honestly, from my opinion, didn't even finish the track, so shouldn't even get the one point, but they are merciful and gracious here at races and fun. Duck and roll. Beautiful jump. Wheels, and, and the jump strategy, you gotta get those front wheels down first. If you get the back wheels down first, you're gonna lose stability. He got the front wheels down just before the back wheels, and that was beautiful. And now the duck and roll tied with Cobra here. Take a look at our points again as we go into Heat 4, last race. Tied with Cobra is the Duck and Roll. Tech Missile just behind, but still has a chance if he gets out in front here. Duck and Roll lagging behind here. Has to go away in that outside hairpin. And it's still him versus Cobra. Oh, the jump is good for the Duck and Roll. He's out in front of Cobra. And down the final straight. Cobra's around and backwards. And I think your Duck and Roll is winning this heat of four. Do you know how excited I am? Very I, I can't express enough my desire to see the duck and roll race more. And look at that, front wheels down. Now, almost too early there, almost uh, 
way too unbalanced, but still was able to roll back to those back wheels. Because if you get those front wheels down too vertically, you can actually flip over and then you're not duck and rolling anywhere. So duck and roll advances by one wonderful point. Cobra will advance as well. It is the top two, but uh, the duck and roll, man. Gets that uh, bragging rights for first place. Can't knock that. Ford GT, Signal, Power Rocket, and the Speedy Perez. I'm going to look here. That Power Rocket there in lane three. Not the Power Rocket that gave up the shutout back on that uh, the full sweep, even we call it, on that fateful day. In, uh, I believe that was the... Uh, the, the spiral tournament. You remember that one tournament where we had like three or so spirals down. Power Rocket's not even going to finish there. And uh, that big tower. And it was almost like a parking garage that they maneuvered through. Um, as they went down three or four full 360 degree rotations. But uh, that was a long time ago. That full sweep. Still the closest any team has got. Power Rocket actually did a good job through the jump, but just uh, struggled to make anything of it uh, after the hairpin. Look, look at him. He just kind of stops dead there. I mean, I don't know what happened. Like It's like the axles were bent or something. Ford GT, Signal, Speedy Perez. Those are cars to look for. Power Rocket, well, you'd need to uh, change a heart or something. Here we go, Speed of Prey is on the needed side. Can he live up to his name? Right now the Ford GT really pulling for speed here down the length through that first turn. Has to go outside again. Those two, out, two outside lanes, tough to maneuver through, but the Ford GT still wonderful through them. Oh, bounces away! Pinball round and round. I think that was a full 360 that the Ford GT did and more, but he still comes across in second and picks up um, a good amount of points. He's going to stay tied with the Speedy Perez. The Power Rocket has the exact same race and finishes literally in the exact same spot. I, I really would love to see a comparison of the two videos. Anyone makes a picture comparison between the first race, Power Rocket, and where he finished in the second one, I will uh, pin that, post that, whatever, whatever you want. Because I want to just see. They look the exact same place. Also, this is a good time. I want to throw this out there um, to anyone who's really listening here. Listen up here. What would you guys think now? I'm going to get going here in the next race. Heat three. What would you guys think about an official racism fun Discord server? We're thinking about it over here in uh, racism fun. And we think it might be good to stimulate more community engagement. Hear some of your ideas. Allow for some... Oh my god! <laughs> the 4GT wiped out! Can I get a break for a second in racism fun races? No, every race is a... A just a... Uh, Calamity, really, and 4GT is up and over, and that might have been a... I don't think that was a front wheels... I'm going to get back to the Discord thing. I don't think that was a... <laughs> I don't think that was a front wheels issue. That was a, uh, a tilt, a sideways tilt. Actually, a little bit of both. Did you see? I look at the, Maybe we'll get this front replay here and start to get an understanding. Look at the 4GT come over. See, up and over, too vertical, but also too sideways. So spun and... and and flipped over at the same time and it wasn't a complete over the front hood but again too vertical on the jump also spun sideways not very good and Ford GT will have some work to do if he wants to stay in front here at least to get second place in advance let's run again Ford GT on the far side here on the near side we got the signal who's been in and out today Ooh, Speedy Perez is your top racer right now. Two wins and one second place. But Ford GT blowing the competition away. Big jump from the Ford GT. And whip around. Oh, we got he's upside down again. Oh, no way. He's still in second place. He comes across in second place. Upside down. And the Power Rocket's going to get his first win. Maybe we'll never get back to the Discord discussion. Whew. That's a race. <laughs> God, look at this, look at this race, look at, he's, he's upside, he was in first place upside down for a full two seconds, he was shoved across, and he advances, <laughs> I laugh, I laugh, I'm gonna break one of these days, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna break, now we got the two from each, duck and roll, 
Cobra from the first heat, four GT and Speedy Perez from the second. Who will come out victorious from this set of four? Duck and roll, maybe? Duck and roll, maybe? By a few legs, do the jump. Big win for the duck and roll coming here. Cobra lagging behind and can't make up the speed. Duck and roll is back for the chance and he's knocked across first. These are races. These are races here at Races and Fun right now. Ford GT is uh, going for a seesaw. I don't know. These are races right now. This, this is easily the most exciting first group I've ever seen. Um, when we have a moment, back to the Discord thing. Would you guys like a Discord? If you do, flood the comments with yes, I would like a Discord, and we'll consider it here at Races and Fun. We'll make one. Um, and we'll hopefully be able to engage with you guys, both me and um, the rest of the team, we'll call it. Um, the rest of the team that does such a wonderful job making these. I, wonderful job putting this all together. It, it really impresses me every single time. I'm so happy I get to be here with you guys and bring this to life. Duck and roll on the far side, running through here and in the middle lane. Coming really fast, up by a couple legs. Big jump for the duck and roll, nails it every time. Up by a leg, still fast, but turns around. 4GT trying to nudge by, block on both sides for the duck and roll in another close race. And the Cobra and the 4GT, either side, it was a, it was a double pronged attack. And the duck and roll managed to block out the Cobra, saw he needed to go back for the 4GT and does so, and manages to keep both cars at bay to the last second and wins again. Street Beasts are not to be messed with here on Races and Fun, let's be clear. Duck and roll two fives, and uh, it's looking grim for the other three cars. Two threes for the Cobra, though, so he's not out of it yet. I would say the Speed Present 4 GT have a lot of work to do. Again, in broken pieces. I'm going to try to finish out the statement once again. Maybe we should... Wait, let's see how the race goes here. Cobra, oh my god. All uh, pinched together there, and I think this one will end. Uh, Speedy Perez, then duck and roll. Coming out in uh, third there. So the points will shift. Again, one more time. Because I don't even know if I've come to the end of this... Uh, discussion that I keep getting distracted by amazing racing. Flood the comments. Flood them. If you want to Discord, we'll make it. Again, we want to interact with you guys, and we're considering it. But we, I want to know. I want to know if that's uh, favored by you guys. And if we get a, a overwhelming response, we will, we will fast-track that idea. All right. The end of that. End of the Discord. As we come towards the end of this uh, this race here. Looks like the duck and roll still in the lead. Still a chance for the Cobra, though, who's winning a big lead right now. But down, eh, down two points. So if the duck and roll falls back in place, it's going to be more than a tie. But no, it's going to be a tie. That's going to bring duck and roll up three points, but Cobra up five. Nine and five is 13. Five, five, um, no, sorry, nine and five is 14. Man, I am slipping today. And then same with uh, 11 and three, making 14, so... We'll have to do some sort of tie break understanding. We'll see how they do it. It's the 4GT there, putting those back wheels down first. And you can see the bounces that happen after that. A little bit unstable. Oh, did I count that wrong? 5 5. Oh, 5 5 2 is 12. Okay, sorry, guys. 5 5 2 is 12 plus 3 is 15. The duck and roll is going to take that. Wow. Um, I'm reeling. But that's group one, so <laughs> see you guys next. I wonder how much the sharks are compensated for being present for this extravaganza. Here comes the first group. And uh, that uh, wonderment might stay that way for a while. I don't really have any way of finding out, but they certainly look happy to be here. 
in the first set yet again. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan, and uh, well, last video I was blown away by the excitement of races that we saw, and again, we will see how that turns out today. Already starting pretty strong, close race. As we begin to identify our best racers, you can see the duck and roll over there actually sitting there lined up. Why? Because eight racers are going to come out of these eight groups. Fastest of the eight from each group. And those eight of the fastest from the eight competing will get to compete in the finals. A lot of eights. Carbide, T-Rex, Destroyer, Mrs. Oates, and the Cobra. I mean, those are your four cars today. And again, back to the Sharks. I mean, truly a fun, a fun part of this course. I mean, we'll see if any cars manage to fall prey to these animals. There's like three of them down there, so they must have you know, paid a hefty price to get such a large Sharks. There's a the T-Rex Destroyer that's going to be left there, uh, left behind. And they uh, certainly look ferocious at that. Imagine being the duck and roll right now, right there near the shark tank, observing the fury. T-Rex Destroyer goes for a roadblock and loses out on its function. <laughs> no one there to receive the block. A good stretch Cobra. I mean, he will be at least somewhat fast today. But it really is the Carbide right now who seems to be fast and agile. Agile is the word I have for the Carbide. Just a, a small car with a, with a sleek body. That's going to be good out on, on the track, especially during the airtime. Here he comes, Carbide. They're in lane three, about to jump. Big jump for the Carbide. Oh, almost flips over, but stays agile. Gets back on his feet like a cat. Upside down, but then falls back on his feet. It wins the race. Cat-like reflexes. And you got a carbide win once again. Cobra's now gone for the phantom roadblock. Um, that's two of them already. Look at the Cobra. Jumps and lands right square in the middle. Oh, wow. And can't uh, make anything of it. Carbide, they're pushing through. Route, pushing by, and the T-Rex Destroyer goes for another roadblock, but manages to come across the line. But again, to break it down, there are eight teams, and each of the eight teams have eight cars. Each of the eight teams give one of their eight cars for each round, which has, um, of which there are eight rounds. Of the eight rounds, you have two heats, narrowed down to the fastest, and one more heat to get the fastest of the fast, and each of those eight cars from each of the eight rounds, we pull out the fastest. There's a T-Rex Destroyer finally coming for a win. We pull out the fastest, and then of those eight fastest from the eight rounds in the eight videos, we make up the eight that will appear in the finals. And again, to be clear, the duck and roll sitting there on the left side is the fastest from the first group of eight in the last video. What a wonderful street beast he is. Advances here, the Carbide and the T-Rex Destroyer. 18 on the Carbide, almost had a full sweep here. Now, this is a different scenario. Second group is gonna get rolling. Um, a full 20 points. Oh, we get the Loco Motor in back. I'd like to see him. This should be a fun one. Giant car, man. Really, really. Makes all the other cars really look like Hot Wheels. <laughs> Looks like Matchbox. Loco Motor and falling behind, though. Big presence through the jump, though. A lot of momentum, but he's zigging and zagging. Can he nudge through down here on the inside? No, he's going to stay back in third. And again, uh... Not an not a overwhelming race for the Loco Motor. lost my train of thought from before when I was distracted by the raise in hand, but so we'll just keep going. 4GT comes out with the first set of five points. Track Hammer, Escape in there as well. All the teams represented today. 4GT, Track Hammer, 
Ford GT a lot faster than any other car right now. Look at the distance. Big jump from that Ford GT. Ooh, rattling a little bit through that transition piece into the final set of track where it has a lot of room to run. And we'll stay ahead of the escape. Pick up another five. Look at the jump. Gets the back wheels down. You can see there's some rattle there. But some jumpers are back wheels jumpers. clear there. I, I honestly, like I was saying last time, really the front wheels down first, like right before the back wheels really gives you the most control. But back wheels seems to work for some cars. Two fives on the bottom with the Ford GT. Here we go. Any other car looks like they could win? I don't know. Maybe the Escape? 4GT already out to a lead again, though, even though he has to take both outside lines. Big lead down into Sector 2, and... Oh! Starts to balk! And it's the escape coming clear. 4GT still coming with third, uh, second place, though, for three points. It will still be tough for the escape to pull it back together here at the end. He wants to win first. A solid race from the escape. Saw, saw the uh, mistake and found the open space. What you gotta do, because sometimes you're not gonna be the fastest car out there. That's just clear. Not always gonna be the fastest car. But, if you can find the space, and see the mistakes when the fastest cars inevitably make them, and that's how you win, even if you're not gonna do it with raw speed. 4GT right now doing it with a raw speed and doing it very well. Here we go, last race of the set. The 4GT falls flat here, he might give up the win to the escape. Escape, oh, coming around the outside line looking pretty good, but 4GT really pulling out a lead. Also with that track hammer, still on his tail, round that final hairpin, 4GT starts to skid, so does the track hammer, and it's gonna end in short order. thinking right now, eyeing up his competition, or, well, his later competition. One of these cars will go up against the duck and roll at some point. Whichever one of these cars comes out victorious. Advances the escape in the 4 GT. I think you all saw that coming. But finally, to return to what I was saying a long time ago, Carbide, T-Rex, Destroyer, 4 GT, and the escape in here in the final set of four. Getting a total um, sweep, like a full sweep, a full 20 points in this set of racing is a lot harder than in the last time, uh, last couple of times that we've had um, sets of four. Oh my god! Whew, the carbide almost lost footing or wheeling and ran off the track at one of the easiest portions. Big airtime, by the way, in the replay. But we'll get to see that as he turns around. Because there's the, it opens up a big jump and then opens up into two fat tracks and converges them all four together after a pretty tough first sector. Oh, there we go. Spins and finds his way back on. It has so much room to work with. He's all right. That it's, it's just really hard to actually win every single race. Some of the other courses still impressive if you can pull off 20 points, but it's... I feel like this is even a little bit harder than all the other four, um, four lane races we might have seen. Because you add that jump in there, then you add a 1v1 battle in the fat track with one car, then they all converge together. And also have this tough first sector with outside and inside hairpins, where sometimes you have to race on both outside. Carbide is around and backwards, he had to leave, but now it's uh, closing quickly, escape! Uh, right behind him, but he can't dodge inside to try to take a lead. And it will be uh, the Carbide once again. I thought the 4GT would have gotten out a little faster, but nothing from him yet. I had trouble getting out of that uh, second, uh, first part of the second sector and left the escape to capitalize in. So yeah, if we see a 20 point take in this set, then I, I, to me that would be extra impressive. By a little bit. Still give credit to all those 20s we've seen in the past. Heat 3, Carbide. It's your big winner right now. Agile car. I can't wait to see this car potentially go up against that golden duck and roll because I think it would be quite a match. Duck and roll is more agile than he may give credit for. Ford GT, big jump right here, staying pace with the carbide up ahead by a few lengths. Here comes the carbide, trying to make up the ground. He does on the inside, and he'll take the lead. Good 
Good show of acceleration down that back straight when the Ford GT got a little bit uh, unfocused maybe because he's skidding. Look at all the time he's skidding. That's two, three lengths of skidding and the carbide just passed him on the right side. We have three five for the carbide. So as I talk about 20s, well, <laughs> this could be the time. He does have the race in a far lane though. So we'll take the two outside hairpins this time. There on the left, which seems to be maybe the one of the tougher lanes because it has it dips down early and then dips back up again um, pretty hard. But the carbide, oh my god, way out in front. Big jump by the carbide. Can he get the 20? He might. T-Rex Troyer, trouble with the Ford GT. They're all skidding around, but the T-Rex Troyer fast nudges the carbide across, and there's 20. First 20 of the tournament. And as I was talking about the difficulty, carbide took it to the end. Five, five. Five and five. And that is a whale of a finish. Just got out in front. It was really, once you're out in front by a good amount of lengths, it's really easy to, to drive defensively, especially if you're an agile vehicle like the carbide. So that's going to bring our second advancing racer and there's six other question marks who will take up those six we will see over the next six weeks come from it's a uh, cross my mind once or twice where is there a whole universe or world that's just uh, straight duck and rolls of different colors and sizes and shapes I don't know Maybe your first set of four cars will get going hey everybody I'm Brendan and I'm wondering about duck and rolls I, I might wonder how they came to be they certainly stick out amongst all the racers that we see here. Oh wow, big spin there by that giant vehicle. I'll take the first one. They certainly stand out as unique. As spectacular. <laughs> Little pun there shoved in. But I wonder what their origin story might be. Someone has an origin story. Growler, Jet Threat, Princess Kabbalah, and the Cobra to be your four. If anyone can offer a compelling origin story, well, let me, let me see that novel in the comments. I'll read it and maybe integrate it into later duck and roll related matters. <laughs> Here comes the Cobra out by a little bit. Big spin, 360, 360 again. And uh, stays in front of the other two cars who can't find the gap to get around because it's a revolving door. And Cobra is doing a still manage to win that. Two 360s. I mean, how many 360s does one car have to do in order to be passed? I mean, the only thing I can think is that we go back to that uh, that one uh, Mushroom Kingdom tournament where Luigi did about six on the track, and Rosalina finally got past him after six 360s. It really was big spin. If anyone remembers that wonderful race where the Mach 8 was put away by the Princess team, it might have been Rosalina or Daisy. I think Daisy Mawaldi or something. That was a upset for sure, and maybe that's the number six 360s in a car can make it past Prince Kabala. We'll take this one. Had two threes too, so he's in a, a threat position to advance to the next round. See that front wheel, that last car there? Front and right wheel hit way before all the other wheels. That was not great. Growler, Jet Threat, Prince Kabala, and Cobra again to read them. And they switched up lanes. Heat four. Let's jump to the scoreboard. Five, two, one. That's eight. Three, three, five. That is a solid 11. So Prince Kabbalah really in the seat to win here. Five, two, two. That's nine. So Cobra, Prince Kabbalah, and Growler still all in a chance. Growler lagging way behind, though. And we actually have the Jet Threat looking for a win here. Prince Kabbalah pushing forward. Cobra not able to get by and shoved across by the Growler. Growler might have beat out the Cobra. Jet Threat. Goes five up, but nine is the best he can do. So even if Cobra got last there, Cobra will be up at ten. And it will be Cobra and Prince Kabbalah, I believe. But Growler might have tied. 
No, no. So Growler was still behind Cobra as they crossed. It looked like Cobra and Growler were dead even, and it was hard to tell, but the officials are the officials, and the Growler must have been just behind. Formula E Gen, Formula Solar Toxic 4 GT. Two formulas and uh, Toxic and a Ford. That's a interesting stratification of vehicles. Oh my god, oh wow. Front wheels grinding on the rail there, almost like a skateboard. And uh, the formula will lose out on it. <laughs> almost lost out completely. Cruised to the end there and forgot there was a car behind him. Four GT came away with the win. Formula E Gen Two right behind. Let's race them out again. Four GT on the near side here, the one to focus on. But the Formula Solar, he's the one that was fastest last time, and looks to be fastest this time. But we'll see how it comes to a climax here. The jump, big jump for the Solar, and comes away much smoother, fast. Four GT full roadblock. Didn't even make any contact with any cars. On just a roadblock with the Formula Solar, and he. Formula Solar roadblock right at the end when he had the win and the 4GT gets shoved across And I was trying to say all that at once <laughs> Big mistake Formula Solar look at this roadblock 4GT shoves him away and the Solar still had it But then right behind the other Formula E Gen 2 shoves the 4GT across and wow And that makes for a tie really between the E Gen 2 and the Solar Really a smart move by the Solar to see that second place is uh, easier for him to grasp now because he put the Solar only in second place. Let's see how we can do E Gen 2 needs to beat out the Solar here if he wants second place. 4G team already have first. Spins around. Trouble even back to the Toxic. But the Solar's going to come across first finally a win. And we have one more race to decide it all, but now it's a little harder for E Gen 2. So much going on. All sometimes, and see the action here is wonderful, but it all sometimes happens all at once. 2 3 5, 3 2 3. So we have 10. We have uh, 8 there. And then we have 4, 4 GT with 12. The Solar and the 4 GT. It could be the most likely here. The E Gen 2, if he's fast, may be a chance, but the Solar blowing this away with speed again. If he could just stay straight down the easy back straight, things would look a lot easier, but he's zigging and zagging. Does come across, and he'll he'll be advancing. And the 4 GT almost completely lost out, but he'll also advance. I mean, those two cars are really the ones who deserve it. The potential of the Solar, if he can get that speed under control, is going to be he's almost duck and roll level. I guess carbide level. We have advances. 15, 13. 120 so far in this uh, three groups that we've seen, and that's been with the carbide in the finals. Um, not in the finals. In the first group last year. I didn't think it was the finals. If I remember correctly. Finals of video two was the finals. Um, but neither here nor there, um, we got another set. Oh my god, grinding on the rail, another skateboard moment, and the wheel's stuck, the wheel's stuck, he might get chipped across, he's on top! He's on top! And I think he, I think he come across before that white vehicle there. I think? Look, look, look at this, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, he does come across. I mean... Okay. Prince Kabala, another one of those, 4GT Cobra and Formula Solar. So, um, a lot of similar models here. And I, I was almost, I was almost confused for a second. I was almost like, this is deja vu here. I mean, I think I saw the 4GT and the, the, the Formula Solar just a second ago. But, I mean, now it's reading as toxic, and I don't really know what to think, but I know it's another Formula Solar and a much more under control. And it'll take a win here. Prince Kabala struggling to get out of that jump and stay straight. See, a lot of bounce. Especially from the car behind him provided some extra airtime. Alright. 
5-2 for the, to well, Toxic, I guess, but it is the Formula Solar. That's what's being read here in the 4x in the grid. But, uh, well, they want to call it Toxic in the board. 4 GT, Formula Solar, same two. Cobra also in there, down in second place, and a big jump. A lot of bouncing out of the jump, though. Oh my god, full couple of spins from the Prince Kabbalah. Can't get up any speed right here on the full. Oh, my god, the Cobra. Cannot seem to get around him, though. Prince Kabbalah, I think, was a wheel length behind the Cobra as I crossed. Look at the replay here. We get another win for the Formula Solar, and the Prince Kabbalah nudged away from the Cobra, but couldn't get in front. And still the Cobra and the Formula Solar kind of holding strong here. Last heat. We have Cobra with 9, and uh, Formula Solar with 12. And the Prince Kabbalah with 8. So it's still anyone's game except for like the 4 GT. We're really not going to have a chance here. Cobra out in front. Run and Piscabala stopped. 4GT runs right by as well. Cobra's gonna win. Formula Solo right behind, and those two will advance, and deservingly so. They had four races to be strong, and they were strong for four. This vantage point there when we get the replay of the jumps. You get to see the whole track. The true height of this track is, is, is really incredible. And they fit the jump in there as well. Formula Solar will advance. I believe the Cobra also. Um, let's just sit in the finals. And that'll be the third race. Just Formula Solar advancing. Set of three. And do not forget to subscribe. As we run five more races. Five more videos to decide the eight that will be in the finals here. And that will wrap things up here. Alongside this one, where the winner of that one will go up against the winner from this one in the ultimate finals for the four car jump. I wonder what is more extreme the thrill of that split second of airtime as they jump the shark tank, or the thrill of that fast descent and that steep drop right beforehand. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan, and no matter which one is more thrilling, both of them are a part of every race here in the four car jump tournament. Let's get to that first group as we start to see who will be the fast and the slow today. And you always have to have one of each at least. Rarely do we see four cars in a first group that uh, all blow us away with their speed. And, I think it's coming true here as well. Formula One looked to be in the lead there for a second, but drops back and loses it, even loses out second. Man, I was not expecting that. Formula One had an easy lead here. But then caused a voice crack for me right at the finish line. So he comes down here and has a pretty clear second, but then all the speed is gone. And Formula One will fall with only two points there. Ford GT with five, Electrac with three. I believe that's an X racer. We we'll always love to see. Metal Machine also could use to pick up some speed as well. Next set of racing here comes a Ford GT. Looks to be the fastest out of the set of four so far. Here comes a Formula One. Ooh, edges out and takes second place to the jump. Big jump for both cars. One was wheels first, one was back wheels first. And both of them landed well, but the Formula One was faster by a long shot. Ford GT though pick up another set of five points and well he's almost all but wrapped us up black track struggles to get over the shark tank there almost visited the sharks for the first time we haven't had the car do that quite yet but i'm sure it's coming five and five in the four gt heat three and let's get them rolling again. 4GT now in that second lane and still coming up quite fast, but has to deal with two outside hairpins this time. How will that fare going against the Metal Machine, who is a little bit faster? Coming down the jump, big jump for the Metal Machine, and rolls over the 4GT, but ends up roadblock, a phantom roadblock himself. That's useless and without any momentum. Oh, wow. What a true muscle fight between these two cars as they jump. Now he's just seesawing back and forth. Must have slipped that roadblock. Look at this. Muscle Machine tries to get, uh, sorry, Metal Machine tries to get under the 4GT and does. Flips him, but the 4GT stays nose first and is able to keep the Metal Machine back and then sidelines him. 
552. That's 12 points for the 4 GT. Last cheat coming up here. Does anyone else have a chance? 313, that's 7, so no. 235, yes, Formula 1 still has a chance. 12 to 10 points. And Formula 1, if he does much better than the 4 GT, there's a chance. Formula 1, big jump, and still behind the 4 GT, and the metal machine, and the electric are getting into the mix. It's going to be hard as the electric starts to skid. Oh, look at the 4 GT riding on the side. He's on the rail. Oh, wow. What a mess of metal. And the metal machine almost took that away. But the 4 GT definitely will be moving on, and I believe numbers-wise that our uh, Formula 1 car will be with him as well. Let's see what we got. Yes, advances Formula 1, advances 4 GT with a nice 17. Second group. Remember, we do have one who's done 20 points on the uh, the duration, and I believe... Uh, if I can recall the name of that car, I think it was the Carbonic or something? I mean, uh, let's see if anyone in the chat can really remember such trivia. Carb Carbonic? It's something like that. I mean, come on, guys. I'll leave that to you guys. I know you guys know a lot more than silly old me, but why can't I recall that name? Car, uh, car, Carbonic? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna let you guys figure it out. Um, but either way, one car at least got the numbers for you. One car did put up 20 points. Diesel Boy, Radical Racer, Speed Racer, and the Cobra. Those are your four cars out now, two of which will ra uh, race against the Formula 1 and the Ford GT. And uh, Speed Racer is the fastest so far. As the name suggests, kind of should be. And look at a Cobra here on the near side. And you got a big lead and a big jump and the Speed Racer has trouble getting out but the foot of the Cobra is all up. I don't know what happened. I think it fell back down. Something's, something glistened there for a second. I don't know if it was the hood or the window, but the Cobra comes across in first. And after that... Uh, only one point in the first race could really use that. I think it was just glinting off the windshield or something that I saw. Because something looked like it flipped up for a second. Cobra with six points, Speed Racer with uh, eight. I feel like those are going to be around. Radical Racer, um, well, I guess Rackticle Racer as it's spelled, but I seem to fix that up on the left side now. Uh, he's also still got a chance with four points. Diesel Boy as well. So they're not all out of it yet. Ractical Racer, big jump. Oh, and he still will get in front of the Cobra who spins away. 360, 360. And it will be the Speed Racer again. Cobra now in a deficit. Radical Racer a little bit better. Look at that spin out on the Cobra. Couldn't find footing. And I think it was the bounce from the Speed Racer in front of him that unleveled that ground. Unfortunate. Nothing doing from the Diesel Boy, who really is not showing anything. All that money spent on Diesel showing for nothing. Stick with the 87. It's expensive enough these days, you know? Anyway. Rolling out the four once again. This is the last heat. Looks like the Speed Racer is a lock for advancement, but is he a lock for first place? He might actually already be. Big jump from the Cobra. It's a big race between him and the Radical Racer to stay ahead. Radical Racer, though, has a big lead, and I think that will be your advancing car. Radical Racer, Speed Racer. Cobra just couldn't get a handle through the jump. Again, some sort of a hesitation, maybe a little bit of a spin out through the end of that uh, lane towards the hairpin. And it's just not been good for the Cobra in the air. Advances, Ractical Racer and the Speed Racer. And we have the finals. Who's our best racer from these four? Uh, that's a good question. And you want to lean for GT. I mean, I, I like on first glance, I want to lean for GT. But Formula One is not a car to count out. And Speed Racer also, we haven't seen in these scenarios as well. Here comes Speed Racer. Oh, look right with the 4 GT connected in. Synchronous jump. But the 4 GT gets out to a lead out of that hairpin. And the Speed Racer will fall short. And that's where it's going to be difficult. Formula One is going to be left away. I mean, honestly, they shouldn't even give him a point for that. But they will. Just stranded right there at the connection point. I guess where it kind of levels out, and so he skidded to a stop where there's not much momentum to push him on. But the 4 GT, that's where it's going to be tough. He's fast out of the jump. He knows how to accelerate through that hairpin. 
and that's going to be hard on the speed racer who's fast especially in the first half but struggles to accelerate when it comes to that back straight really just a maintaining of speed let's see how he does here he's got inside lines here to work with oh he's coming out way faster than the 4 gt even though the radical racer still holds a big lead big jump radical racer is not gonna go he's gonna get out in front and he spins him away 4 gt can only push the speed racer across and it'll only be a one point gain for the speed racer radical racer really put a pin in that mess on the speed racer and sent him away it was really through that transition piece radical racer was able to find the inside and just kind of spun him into the hairpin and there was no coming back after that heat three let's roll him out again let's look at our score here we got seven on the four gt six on the speed racer and seven on the radical racer so it's still anyone's game well the formula one maybe not but still anyone else's game big jump from the speed racer oh my god he kicks back and forth and he oh wow how did he still get out and win that and where's the ford gt this is an upset and this is going to be a, a an uphill battle for the ford gt in the final uh, the final race of this final i guess uh -oh. i mean what happened what happened to the ford gt just everything fell apart it was just that i was praising his ability to accelerate nothing doing so uh 11 points for the speed racer um, and it looks like we got, we got nine there on the Radical Racer. It'll be ten on the Ford GT. No, no, seven, no, eight on the Ford GT. Sorry, Radical Racer didn't run better. So, nine, eight, eleven. Still a chance for any one of these vehicles, but not if the Speed Racer is going to have a big jump again and get out to a lead. Oh, he batters away, and he's back and forth, and the Ford GT on the side for a second, but still loses out. And the Formula One, the only one to pass up the Speed Racer, really has no uh, say in this one. The spin there in the, the transition piece, that, that really shakes things up, but it still will be the, spe uh, the Speed Racer advancing. 10, 10, 10, and 14, so in a very messy finish, Speed Racer, who may not really be the fastest in this case, is going to move on. Uh, to that final eight starting the four car jump tournament the channel diecast racing tv is also running a simultaneous similar tournament alongside this one where the winner of that one will go up against the winner from this one in the ultimate finals for the four car jump one of my favorite parts about this particular tournament is the diversity of vehicles we get to see every single time hey everybody i'm brendan and did you not notice that as we go into day five you probably have already that instead of a uh, two teams against each other each video it's one car from each of eight teams which actually go up against each other see if you can pick out who is from who obviously the cobra <laughs> car is from the cobra team so I'm going to give that one to you as a gimme, but the other ones, all from different teams. Torpedo, probably over from the Street Beasts, and so on and so forth. Oh my god, we're spinning all over. Oh man, I mean, Cobra has no place in this race, but Unobtainium just unobtained a win. Um, and uh, I'm going to leave you with that small punt. with the Cobra. He almost ate, ate the Sharks there. I Just just absolutely no speed. And I've seen Cobras in this because the Cobra is the same model every video and a lot faster than that for sure. Delilah's in there. Again, Scorpedo. An Obtanium. What a name. Certainly a very striking vehicle as well. Big. Giant SUV. And then with a nice uh, set of gray... Uh, minimalistic even racing stripes down the side oh this one uh this time he's the slowest one and he almost tips over scorpedo can't seem to find his footing either where's any other vehicle where's the delilah i don't know but the unobtainium is your winner even though he was in last place through the jump do we have a we have a vehicle in the water did we miss that do we get a replay on that because i missed that i was so uh obsessed with the uh unobtainium oh wow <laughs> just went right in there there's no speed. It, it was it was almost it was so discreet I didn't catch it. 
Scorpido finishes backwards. Co Cobra kind of drags himself across, and this is really not a good set of, of four racers, if I'm very honest with you. This is, um, this is not your strongest four by any stretch of the imagination. We had that uh, Play Robotics timing gate, which is absolutely wonderful up there. We would see some pretty low times. Delilah's going to try to come back strong. Big jump this time. Spins back and forth. Scorpido gets in front, though. Even though the lead was more lengths than I could count. And the Scorpido is going to... Well, there you have it. I... It's, it's, hard. it's hard to make sense of a race when it doesn't make sense. That... I'm going to obtain him to finish backwards there as well, and we're just in a mess. But Scorpido is uh, the Lord of the Flies here. Delilah, Cobra, Unobtainium, Scorpido. I'm going to name him again, but really, uh, Scorpido's probably got this. Unobtainium and Delilah still have a chance here. Cobra, I, I think it needs to go back to the shop. Scorpido, big jump here. Delilah with them. Oh, a nudge, and Scorpido is shot forward. A still, oh my god, he almost goes off the side like a skateboard. And, well, Scorpido will move on. And I think Delilah is going to as well. What do you think of more uh, skateboard-like vehicles that I can use there when they grind the rail? Oh, we need a tiebreaker. <laughs> 10 and 10, so, <laughs> okay. Um, I should just flip a coin at this point, but let's see it. All right, Unobtainium, Delilah. My money's on Delilah because I feel like with less vehicles, she's going to have an easier time. But the Unobtainium is coming out strong and with a little more speed here. Oh, it's down by like Here comes the big jump. And oh, he spins and both cars are locked in that bottleneck. The Unobtainium is just left stranded. And Delilah will put that away and, well, I guess she'll flounder around in the finals later. Well, unless, of course, we have four slow cars here in the next group. Really another wonderful reason that we have a diverse set of eight, one from each team each time, because then we really get to see the slow and the fast. I mean, um, they're all, uh, all these teams are smart about who they're going to put where, and they're going to put the slow with the slow and the fast against the fast to give them the best chance. And um, Well, you're seeing that here. Formula One, Salt Shaker, Metal Machine, Ford GT. These cars look like they have a little bit more in them. Um, and that will manifest soon. Who do we got? Who do we got coming down first? Looks like Formula One a lot faster this time than in the last video and just agile through that bottleneck. Comes down the back straight and just races to a finish. Reminds me of the conveyor cup where Formula One just... Oh. oh an important third place battle. Third. I'm not going to replay them. That was really close. If that was a first place battle, I would have been screaming words I didn't even understand. Here we go, Formula One, then the Salt Shaker. Oh, look how close that was. A little bit of a nose block there, too. Bad on me for not catching that. But I guess uh, sometimes we do overlook the back two vehicles. A little bit of a nose block, always good to see. We haven't seen a, as much of that as you might think in these kinds of races. We had that backtrack at the end and a big hairpin. I think we're going to see some more uh, nose blocks, maybe a few more roadblocks. Formula One's coming up faster here. Salt Shaker still in there as well, back and forth, and there won't be any close finishes this time. And here the four GTs in the back. But I think the nose block is. I mean, it seems to be more of a Mushroom Kingdom thing. We see it with non-Mushroom Kingdom cars, but because those are carts, so they're shorter in length overall, they're, the spread between the back and front wheels is, is much smaller, and they're usually a little bit, well, not necessarily wider, but relative to the, to the length, a little bit wider. You're going to see a lot more of that twisting, a lot more of that intentional nose and road block. So I think, I think that's why we don't see it here as often, but we still do see it, and I like to point it out when we can. Oh, big jump on the salt shaker who had a big lead, but big roadblock. And, oh my god, it wasn't even touched as he got slipstreamed to the back. Oh, man. No, that's just embarrassing. Big, big jump here, comes up, and is big lead by a length even over second place. Full track length, and just spins. Just spins and untouched as three cars revolve around him in all directions. Stuck in that bottleneck, finishes backwards. 
And unfortunately, that's going to dock him a few points. And he's going to have a struggling time at this point to uh, get to get to the finals. I think if he can win this one, well, then he's got a shot. Here comes the Salt Shaker. Let's take a look at him. He's on the inside hairpins this time, so he's got a little advantage. He's a fast car, so if he can gain control here out of the jump, he's good. Big jump and control gauge. There's a hairpin coming down the back straight. And I think Salt Shaker will also advance along with Formula One. One, two, five, two, one, three. Metal Machine and 4GT will fall sadly short. And Formula One, still your most pedigreed racer of the whole video so far, so expectations are high as we head to those finals. Well, there's your set. Advances, advances. 15, 12. The last two are 14, and then tie for 10, which is broken, so a 10. So, I mean, really, really not um, any standouts here. Besides the Formula One, which seems to have an edge speed-wise. So let's see how it goes. Inside line for the Formula One this time. This is the final. Delilah and Scorpido on the near side, and Delilah a lot faster than I thought she was going to be against Formula One. Big jump, and she has no problem getting to the hairpin. Coming on a back straight, Formula One skids back and forth and gets second. Um, and Salt Shaker, I think, got stuck in the bottleneck again. Salt is coagulating. And he's having trouble loosening up out there. And, oh, the jump was rough. You see that? He kind of got... Uh, Stuck in the rails. Here he comes. That's way delayed. And, huh. Whoa. Five for Delilah. Not what I expected, but what is happening. 87 there painted on the side. And really a nice, uh, a nice model car. Beautiful color choice. Nice design. That pink with the, the bright, shiny decals. It's something you think of. Uh, Reminds me of that strawberry cream. Here comes, oh my god! Big 360 and once again, revolving door. Salt Shaker runs out in front. And Formula One is going to follow just behind. I mean, can I, can I have a race where I don't have to go from, uh, from absolutely calm to heart attack at the bottleneck? It, it doesn't seem to happen. All right. Well, five and two for Delilah. Seven points, she still holds the lead. Only one car can come away to winning here. Salt Shaker still threatening. Formula One still as well with six, but just in more of a consistent fashion instead of that five and one, which is just horrid, really, in my opinion. Salt Shaker, big jump again, and comes through pretty smoothly. Ties to skip through there, does. Formula One's left behind. That's gonna be tough on the Formula One. Delilah comes through second, and I think it's Salt Shaker versus Delilah here at the end. Formula One kind of gave up the ghost here. And uh, if he was at six points, we'll be at seven. Delilah will go from seven to ten, and Salt Shaker will go from six to eleven. So in theory, if Salt Shaker finishes last, Delilah in second to last, and the Formula One gets the top, well, then we have a tiebreaker situation. So we'll see. I'm excited. I want a three-way tie. I could, I could, uh, that would be a three-way tie. I think it would, it would be a three-way tie. Formula One, let's get rolling here, but he's way behind Delilah and Salt Shaker, even Scorpido out there, and they're all a mess of metal swinging around, and Formula One is left on the rail to die. Doesn't even finish. Wheels just broken. Axles. Severed almost. <laughs> I don't want to get too dramatic here. And let's see who came across first. Delilah. So Delilah's going to win this one. And against what I expected, Delilah advances 15 points. Not a bad finish. Salt Shaker almost had it. That will be your next car. And as we pan to the finals board with the duck and roll there at the top left, my favorite. And we'll do it for this one. Subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Races and fun as we head. Only three spots remain. 
in the four car jump finals as we head here to round six. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan and do not forget that following this tournament is a extra finals that will uh, consist of the winner from this set and the winner from the set over on Diecast Racing TV who's also running a tournament alongside this one. We hope that you are enjoying that additional content and uh, we would love your feedback on the Diecast Racing TV uh, call that bonus content to supplement with this one. Now we'll add an extra video and an extra exciting finals between even faster vehicles. Well, at least finding the fastest uh, from a larger set. Golden Arrow will come across and take that first one as we kick things off here. Remember again, one car from each team. There's eight teams and we're gonna take one car from each one over the course of these eight videos and we will narrow it down to the best from each video. This time Golden Arrow, Croc Rod, Speed Racer, and Cobra are your four to begin us today and four will follow later. And as we head into Heat 2, Golden Arrow is your current leader with five points. Cobra not far behind with three, two and one is Speed Racer and Croc Rod respectively. Oh, look at the spin right there on the Speed Racer. Oh, it's a bottleneck. All the cars are stopped up and spinning around. We got a roadblock there and no, oh, both cars not going to finish. I think that's the Golden Arrow who went for a roadblock when all things seemed like they were falling apart and actually put it on pretty well. Snapped against the rail and ended up with just enough forward progress compared to the croc rod to pick up uh, the two points instead of the one. Now we'll put the croc rod in a tough straight because he's only got two sets of one point. Golden Arrow five and two, Cobra five and three, now our leader. Here comes the Cobra around the outside line and he's way behind the speed racer who's finally starting to pick it up. Maybe this is the first win. He does get through the bottom quickly but the wheel's hanging off the side. All of the cars are catching up to the Cobra. Comes across just ahead. I thought he might have had the win finally, definitely the fastest car in this group, two times made it to the jump quick, but had trouble being agile on the jump, got stuck through the hairpin and allowed the Cobra to nudge back in and almost allowed the other two cars behind to make moves as well. I was able to dislodge that wheel from the rail and uh, well, he'll come away at least with the three points. Still has a chance. Here to advance, only needs to be in the top two. Two, three, three, that's eight points. Five, two, one, that's also eight. If he beats out the Golden Arrow, he's got the transition to the next uh, round to the finals, and that he will do! Big lead! Everything worked together perfectly, and the Speed Racer will advance along with, well, the Cobra, who was, uh, was way ahead going into this one anyway. And we'll have enough points, even had enough points after round three to advance. And actually, almost passes up the Golden Arrow there. And the Croc Rod, not so much. Not your best racer. Speed Racer moving on. Golden Arrow falls short even after that great first race. And we'll jet to the next group here, that second group. And Formula One Crescendo Metal Machine in Ford GT. I believe for Crescendo is our uh, X racer in there, though. Let's see how he compares with these other three. Metal Machine also there, coming out pretty slowly. Big jump for the Formula One, comes away smoothly, starts to spin, and he's snapped against the rail. And there he's going to lose two places and maybe three. No, he's got second. He's got third. Look at the replay here. Formula One comes out, big jump, smooth landing too, so things looked good. But he snapped up against the rail, and look at that. Lost two places in the matter of a millisecond. We got a win from the 4 GT Crescendo also pulling his weight pretty well also. I realize I just said also twice in one sentence and well, you guys are just going to have to live with that. No one, no commentator is perfect. Here we go, 4 GT, few lengths ahead here and big jump for the Formula One who snaps again on the inside rail. I think the wheel got caught and not just loses one place, but two, I, mm, I think just lost one. What happened to the other vehicle? I thought he was going to get overtaken immediately, but I think a car might have been left behind. Formula One struggled there, but what about the metal machine car? 
Oh, fell off! Fell off on the hairpin! Um, no, that wasn't- that wouldn't have been Crescendo, actually. Metal Machine crosses in front of Formula One. It was Crescendo to fall off at the hairpin through that, uh, that, uh, narrow section. And, and things are, well, really inconsistent for all these vehicles, except for the Ford GT, who's definitely advancing at this point. The question is, which one of these other cards advancing? They're all tied at four. Ford GT taking over a big lead once again, but Crescendo's got a chance. He has a big lead. Big jump and a good land. Formula One also in there. If he can beat out the Crescendo, he's got it. But no, the Crescendo will advance along with the Ford GT. And the Metal Machine takes his turn at not finishing this time and is just lodged between the two rails. Truly an odd set of DNFs in this set of uh, four cars. We had a DNF from the Metal Machine and a DNF from the Crescendo, both in unexpected fashion. Usually that hairpin is fine um, for getting around. No, we got one more race, too. I thought we had four. I thought we had already progressed through four, but maybe so much excitement in the three in my head accounted for four, but still a chance for another racer. Looks like the Crescendo has the lead right now, but Formula One can, ooh, well, never mind. <laughs> right into the water there, and Formula One can do nothing but, well, look for a towel to dry off. That was <laughs> well-timed. <laughs> and he's in the drink there, hanging with the sharks. And, uh, even though I was one race too early, I was still correct in saying that Crescendo will advance along with the Ford GT. And pull off a win. Metal Machine just not fast enough, and Formula One just extremely inconsistent. And that's going to do him in. Well, neither here nor there. Advances Crescendo, advances Ford GT. And with the... Uh, what disappoints me most is, is I see a lot of potential in the Formula One in that previous round. There was speed potential, but it just fell flat. He struggled to stay agile after the jump. Had a few times where he got there first and it just didn't, uh, didn't percolate the right way. Here comes a speed racer, faster even from this final group, and smooth through the transitions, and we'll take this first one in spades. And I think the Cobra is your lagging racer who looked fast there through the jump but started to spin. I think that bounce that the speed racer and the other cars were providing really spun up the Cobra there and uh, he's going to fall behind. I think it's still even though. I think it's possible for any racer. Speed racer's got to stay strong if that speed's going to continue to to serve him well. He's got to stay uh, consistent and careful after the jump. Focus on getting all those wheels down. Focus on getting uh, that nose pointed forward so there's no spinning and no lodging between the rails. He's fast again. Big jump. Almost turns over. And he is clean through the hairpin down the back straight. And he's all right. This time, the Cobra comes in second. Crescendo is knocked back and forth a little bit. And he'll follow suit in the Ford GT. He dominated in his first round is really a... Seeing how difficult it is when you go up against uh, the better racers. Oh, 4GT passed right there. Wow. Right at the end, two points for 4GT, actually. Speed Racers got it, though, so far. Ten points on it. Let's flirt with Heat 3 here. Speed Racer has the outside line this time in lane 2. He is not your fastest car coming to the jump chance for the Cobra. Speed Racer, both of them struggle, and the Speed Racer comes away cleaner. Cobra is rubbed against the side and spinning 360, and the Crescendo is going to pass by in seconds. A mess for both vehicles, but the Speed Racer got a lucky break because I think the bounce of the behind car kind of knocked him off the side and allowed us to straighten out. It was the Cobra, though, who got all the wheels stuck on the side of the rail and was too slow to even grab second place. 5-5-5 five, five, five for the Speed Racer. I mean, that's it. Can anyone, any other car even put up a win for posterity's sake here? Well, I guess we'll find out. Speed Racer also 
lagging behind a little bit this time. I think your fastest car to the jump here is going to be a 4GT this time. Big jump, Cobra along with him, and he spins him around. And it's a little bit of a roadblock, but a short one comes back to Stunner. Here comes the Cobra with a roadblock. He's knocked across. Knocked across. What a silly move, but it still paid off. A little bit of a, again, a snap against the rail. Got a little air tag. And then comes down Cobra, just skids, and is just very fortunately knocked across. And that will wrap this one up. Speed Racer advances. Don't forget to check out Diecast Racing TV for the other side of this tournament. And there are only two spots left as we head... To Something worth pondering is the uh, true volume of DNFs that have occurred over the course of this tournament. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan and I'm noticing that there have been quite a few DNFs in various different circumstances under various different reasons. On the hairpin, through the jump, into the shark tank, just a couple lengths from the finish. Here are our first four getting going here. It has uh, been rough on many of these vehicles, and I think it's that convergence from, from four lanes to four cars on one single fat track piece that has caused for some difficult and high impact racing. And Parable here looks like he's gonna have a lead, and another DNF might be in order. Gray Ghost barely looks like he's gonna get out of here, but he'll speed up and get across. But something to think about. DNFs here happen at the Shark Tank. You see in this convergence, sometimes cars get uh, spinned around when the track gets so thinner. And, and hairpin is no easy set either. Banked hairpin. I mean, it has been a true test of not just, not just endurance and agility, but also strength. Also just the ability to power through and fight off other vehicles. You uh, usually avoid mentioning strength when discussing racing because usually it's really down to agility and understanding the most intelligent racing line. You gotta have a little strength out there. You gotta have a little like, gusto to push some cars out of the way. And Parable's got his first win here. Cobra with a big jump here and a big lead. And he loses it all to Grey Ghost, who's coming fast and with a win from one up to five. Big race here. Cobra had, had the win, he really did, but it all went pear-shaped out of the jump. Grey Ghost saw the opportunity, came through the other lane, and just blasted through. This time the Imparable struggles to get out of uh, third place and is going to take only a couple points. Street Creeper, not with a good showing either. Cobra's at least consistent with two second places. Heat 3, rolling out. Let's get it. Grey Ghost 1-5, Imparable 5-2, Cobra 3-3. Three, three. They are all capable here to win. Even Street Creeper, if things are fast here, but doesn't look good for the Street Creeper. Barely gets over the jump. Smooth out of the jump, though. He's actually up to second. Here, a battle with the Grey Ghost to the inside and the outside. But no, doesn't have the acceleration. And Grey Ghost, after a first race, which was really unflattering, is showing that he actually is here to stay. It was a fluke, the negative, and now consistent in the positive. Grey Ghost. 5-5-1. Five, five, Still leaves the door open, though, for another one to win. Look at that one. He's only got 11 points. Let's look over to the other set of points here. Cobra's got 3-3-2, three, three, so there's 8. Still has an opportunity. Imperable 5-2-1. Also, there's still an opportunity. 2-1-3. Street Creeper, I think, is out of the race here, but still could get second. Street Creeper, this time, big jump and has a huge lead. Smooth on the jump once again. He is going to battle it out with Grey Ghost, who's not even there, but he goes for the roadblock. Grey Ghost revolves him and shoots him across in second and almost got stuck under the carriage of the Street Creeper. But actually, as I say that, the Street Creeper may have had enough points to advance. Well, I think the Imperable has him by one. Look at that. Under carriage mistake there. Imperable does come across just after. And the advancer will not be the Street Creeper. Comes up one point short. Imperable 
and the Grey Ghost consistent enough to advance. Next set of four, after a good set of very hard-fought racing. Oh, a set of interesting cars. We got another Ford GT in there. We got a metal machine in there. We have a what for two. Um, anyways, makes me double take and a track him. Big jump from the track him. But who is coming fast right there? Is that the what for two? No, that's a Ford GT. Uh, the, what, the metal machine came last there, and the what for two is more of a translucent guy. I got him confused for a moment, just on that first bit of color. And the what for two did not have a good jump. See a backwards finish there from the metal machines. An unfortunate set for most of these cars. Four GT comes away strong though, five points. Heat two, we have our lane set out here. Remember, across here, it's lane one on the near side and lane four on the far side, and between two and three. So two and three are those outside hairpins, one and four are those inside hairpins on the respective side. Here comes the Ford GT, breaking away once again, starts the roadblock. Why all the roadblocks all of a sudden, but still gets across in first? But I think he shoved back on the track hammer, and track hammer may not have finished in second. Let's see what happens again. So we come down here, 4GT really arbitrarily goes for a roadblock, but creates some commotion here. Look at the track hammer. Nudges into him, spun around, and I think the what for 2 does get that wheel across the line first. And no, no. They do not say so. I thought it would. It looked to me like the what for 2 had just uh, gotten across that plane of the finish line a little ahead, but apparently not. And the track hammer does pick up another set of three, which is gonna make it easier for him to be strong here in the last set of races. But this time the 142 is breaking away big time, and I think the 142 is putting it away anyway. Track hammer could not even get out of uh, last place there. Ford GT will definitely advance, and I think the what for two is gonna follow suit because of that first place finish. Track hammer didn't even get around metal machine. Okay, then. We got one more race. But the track hammer still has an opportunity, I guess. 3 3 1 for the track hammer, that's set. 2 2 5 for the what 4 2, that's nine. So still a chance between the two. Metal Machine's out. 4 GT. 5 5 3 for 13. He's probably definitely, actually, most definitely in. Track hammer ahead of the what 4 2. And the what 4 2 spins out. He's gone. And. I think, I think, we don't have a tie! We do have a tie! Track Hammer picks up five. What for two picks up three? The difference between the two before this race was two, and that will even it out. We have a tie for second. 4GT will, of course, win out here, and we will go into a tiebreaker 12-12. 4GT with 15 is advancing. Unfortunately for the Metal Machine, not so much. Tiebreaker. Interesting. What for two for uh, four two and the track hammer? And I thought, again, I thought the what for two had it in that one race for second place, but I guess not. This time, what for two showing that raw speed coming out really strong. Hammer starting to spin, loses out the speed, and the track hammer blows by, and that is it. What for two is gonna be like what when he sees the replay from that couple of races ago? where he clearly had that wheel across the plane. Or again, I think that's my opinion. I don't, I didn't see all the angles. And we'll be a little bit upset that a, uh, probably a slower car, raw speed-wise, will actually be advancing to those finals. But again, as uh, races and fun continues to innovate on their tracks and create more and more exciting features, You'll notice that raw speed is not the only requirement to you know, pull off a easy win. In fact, no win has been easy lately. Here comes the track hammer. And we'll kick off the finals, uh, the finals with the track hammer starting strong, which is uh, marginally surprising considering that he seemed like the slowest raw speed car coming into the finals. All right, 
Two, three, one, five. Track Hammer is your leader. Grey Ghost, I'd like to see get a little bit better of a look. Maybe the Imperable. Ford GT, I'm expecting to at least be middle of the road here. And let's send him out again. Right now, Track Hammer coming out faster. Where was that in the tiebreaker? So he got so lucky in the tiebreaker, now he's showing that he has all the speed. What is going on here? Grey Ghost can't seem to land freely. Ford GT fast, though, and the Imperable who's going to end in third. 4GT will take this one and at least keep it, keep every car in the game, basically. I don't know what's going on with the Great Ghost right now, but I saw excellent racing in that first heat and now, uh, that first group, and now it's just not, it's just not uh, showing. All right, 2-1 for the Grey Ghost. 5-3 and 3-5 for the 4GT and Track Hammer, who are now tied at 8 going into heat 3. One, two, three, four across here in lanes. We got four GT there on the five far side. We got the Imperable here on the near side, taking that inside line. Track Hammer still getting off to a fast start. Four GT big jump, and it looks like the four GT had a cleaner break coming down that final straight. He's got it. Track Hammer uh, edging for second and does grab it. And I think we know the two cars who are going to be in content uh, contention for the final. Um, Key here. Of course, on the track camera and the Ford GT, who, with their consistency, have made it really hard for any other car to fight back in. Let's see it. 4 GT track camera. 355. 4 GT has the advantage. Track camera down by two. Track camera, of course, with uh, 11. 4 GT with 13. The other two cars are out at this point to possibly win. Here they go. Coming around the turn here. 4 GT way big lead. Track Hammer not even getting a good jump. And unless the 4 GT runs off the track, the 4 GT will advance. There you go. Strong finish from the 4 GT. And that's going to do it for this one. I thought the Track Hammer might have had a shot here. But unfortunately for this particular heat, could not get... Um, a fast start and did not get to the jump first. Not to mention the horrendous landing. But that was after it was already over. 18 for the 4GT, track hammer only 12, and now we'll even things out. 4GT advancing, and now we have seven finalists. Who will be the eighth? And I can't be more happy reminding myself that the first finalist put up. how this last group would turn out and my predictions are very lopsided. I either feel it will be the best eight or maybe the worst eight that we've seen so far. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan. Each team, each of those eight teams that you saw at the top of this video chose one car each video to put out there. They've all chose their last car here, the first set of four. And so is their last car the best one they've been saving or the worst one they're just throwing away? Maybe even one in between. I tend to lean that it's either going to be a mix of the worst or the best. Oh my god, a couple of wheels on the hood right there, but I think the T got away with that. Anyway, good start. These cars. So we'll see if it holds true. Look for the best, look for the worst here in these groups. As we pick the last of the eight to head to the finals. It was that 4GT to get first place. Formula One lagging behind with only one point. A metal machine and burlesque in there with two and three respectively. Let's send them out again. This time on the near side, that 4GT. And way on the far side, that Formula One. Five and one. Here we go. 4GT way out in front. I mean, best of the best when it comes to maybe the 4GT choice. Unless these other three cars are just slow and they just, oh my god, look like a bunch of pinballs. Oh my god, and rotates to 4GT and passes by the burlesque. 
let's break this down. Well, Burlesque almost goes hood first there, but manages to right himself. In the hairpin, a whole sort of commotion, but the 4GT during that commotion rides the rail and ends up with an unexpected, unplanned roadblock, spun around once, maybe even twice, and still manages second place. Hard to follow, easy to remember. Let's roll him out again. Burlesque is now very inside this one, three and five. Not one of the fastest cars out of the gate, as you can see. Lag behind quite a bit that time, but is good in that last part of track. Formula One, really fast this time, and just a bit slower than the Ford GT into the hairpin and starts to spin out. Here comes the metal machine, second place. And I think that second place by the metal machine, I could be wrong still, it's very close, was deserving of that voice crack. Sometimes the excitement is so great that my body says, we can't handle whatever you're trying to say right now, and it just squeaks. That's my interpretation of the voice crack. My interpretation of this finish, though, is I think the metal machine had it. Let's see how the points line up, and yes, Metal Machine back in this one! By a little bit, anyway. Formula 1 can't catch a break here, so 3-2-2 th two, two in the Metal Machine, that will make 7. 3-5-1, that's 9 for the Burl S, so the Metal Machine is still inside this one if he can be fast. Ford GT looks like he'll already have an advancing spot. Formula 1, fastest out of the gate here, and into the fat track, coming fast, still not able to advance, but a big finish for the Formula and the Burlesque Ford GT follows suit. And Metal Machine will not advance as well. And it will be that Burlesque and the Ford GT moving on. Instead of racing right there. And you saw the two most capable move on. Not the two fastest. Formula 1 was really fast. And even um, maybe the fastest in a straight run but was not capable through all the different obstacles. Next set of four. We'll get a Street Beast in there. Speed Racer, Cobra, Street Beast. Man, look at that thing. It's like a pterodactyl. An Electrak. Let's see what kind of speed we have coming out. That's like a golden, what a golden one. Kind of goes well with that duck and roll, that golden duck and roll. I think these ones are a little bit harder to find too, so um, really a wonderful choice. Though, I think he just went into the water, so I'm gonna flap those wings because that's, uh, I mean, I can see him down there. Oh, look, we got another car in there, kind of just chilling in the jaws of the shark, kind of as the, as the, the token example of, you know, bad racing. <laughs> look, he just went right in there. <laughs> that made me laugh. That <laughs> he just, he just, he didn't even try to get, <laughs> he didn't even try. There was, it looked like little effort <laughs> to go for the other side of that tank, just just right in, almost like he was going for a, he was like entering in the shallow end, just walking right in, going for a wave in the pool. Maybe something new from him this time. Let's see the Street Beast make the jump this time. Right now the fastest car, big jump for the Street Beast, and he turns it around. Now he's in the lead, big run to the end, straightens out, and he's got five. Wonderful. I wanted to count the street beast out, I mean, truthfully, because that was just a, it was a laughable attempt, first run, and now he's like, okay, well, I'm going to right myself and come out strong. There we go, 5-1. Let me change up lanes again. Maybe it was just bad luck in that first lane. Maybe hit like a rivet in the road or something. Here we go. Street Beast. I and him again because honestly, who knows what he's going to do at this point. Starts to lag behind this time. Has to take those outside lines. How is he going to go for the jump? Right now, the Electrak, a big lead for him. Cobra trying to hold on but can't. He goes for a roadblock and the Street Beast is back into second place. Cobra trying to do to the outside line. But no. Look at the Cobra's jump there, and that's what I was talking about earlier. You gotta get those front wheels down first. You got the back wheels down, and he started to skid side to side and bounce. Then he went for that, again, an unplanned roadblock, and it was just spun around, and, and the Street Beast rolled right through. And, he, and the Street Beast is now in a position to move on here. Street Beast 153. Speed Racer also 153. 
So nine for both of them. Electrak, also nine. Cobra, the only one down there. So Cobra still has a chance though, and Cobra coming out the fastest this time. Things might shake up quite a bit. Cobra with the lead and clean to the hairpin. He's got a stretch to the end. He could advance and he will advance. Street Beast? No. Cobra will pick up five there and go to 11. He will tie with the uh, other car. Um, who is that? I think it was Electrac. No, no. No, it was Speed Racer there to go 9 plus 3 for 12. No, we have a tie. We're going to have a tie here because Electrek also had 9 and picked up 2 to go right to 11 as well. So tie breaker, Electrek, Cobra, Speed Racer is advancing. I miscalculated mentally in that split second. But fortunately enough, we get to see him battle it out. Cobra still with a chance here to advance. Came from behind and still has the opportunity to Electrak. A much faster start here in this one. Big jump coming from the Electrak. Big jump. Wheels down first. Almost hits the side. Cobra back in it. A ram to the side. Cobra's right behind. Dodge to the inside. No. Did not make a move at the end and just coasted with the Electrak. Couldn't get any speed out of that draft lane. And I was trying to will him to dodge inside and at least give it a shot, but I had to say no. And unfortunately, as I thought Cobra was going to be going on, but no, it will be Electrak advancing with Speed Razor. Rightfully so, though. Two very fast cars. And now we have our finals here. 4GT, Cobra, Electrak, and Speed Racer. This should be good. I still think that 4GT is going to come out a little bit faster than the other 4 and 3. And yes, he does. Look at that. The speed still building for the 4GT. Already a big lead. Big jump coming from the Ford. Oh, look at him go. And if he keeps control here to the rest, he's going to start with a 5. And I think he can take it right to the end. Maybe even a 5-5-5-5, five, 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 which we haven't seen, um, I really think, since the beginning, a couple of videos. With the uh, carabine, carabine, carbine, 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 The name escapes me, but it was a, it was a, it was a tiny, skinny, agile car. Carabine or something. Carabine. Hell if I can keep track of all of them, right? Ford GT, Burlesque, Electrac, Speed Racer. These four I can keep track of, though, in this moment. And I'm going to... Try to give it to you as best I can. Here come 4GT, now in the second lane. Has to deal with outside lines here, so it gives other racers a chance. A, a speed Racer coming out a little faster this time. Electrak also in there, tied with the 4GT with a big jump. And 4GT gets a little bit out in front through the hairpin. Still behind the Speed Racer. Speed Racer, oh, breaks away, and 4GT went for a spin. the outside line and get the last race to go back in from lane four. And that's probably for the best. I, I think the four GT really had it made because I think if you start in that first lane and get to go inside two inside hairpins and then you get the last race to have two inside hairpins, it gives, it gives you a good opportunity to start strong and end strong. Here we go. Electra coming on the inside line. Big lead from him. Speed Racer also still in the game here. 4GT trying to catch up, but it's all over the place. And he snaps against the Burlesque. He's going to be back in third. Burlesque may not even come to the end here. If you saw the snap in the hairpin, Burlesque seemed to be kind of shoveled from underneath. And wheels hanging off almost fell off the track. And that's quite a drop from that hairpin. Oh man, look at the Electrak too. Grinds the side rail. All, all was happening during the big snap. Speed Racer is going to pick up another one in 4GT. Well, he's going to need a win here. It's still possible for the 4GT to come back. 5-3-2 for the 4GT. 5-5-3 for the Speed Racer. Here we go. 4GT needs to win this race. And Speed Racer, if there's going to be contest, needs to get less then second here. Here we go. 4GT. Is he the fastest part of the jump? No, he's not. Not this time. Even the inside lines. Big jump for the speed racer, and he'll get out of the hairpin first again. 4GT can't push through the road blocking electrac, and speed racer will be the eighth 
of all of these cars to head to the finals. Ford GT tried to get out there, but couldn't push back the Electrak who did, again, I think that was an unplanned roadblock because I imagine the Electrak wanted to, to get out in front, maybe take a win, but I mean, it was, it was just all pear-shaped there. Eighth race, there you go, Speed Racer. There are your eight cars, all going to be seen again in the finals. Normally I hesitate to call out the replays and the camera shots at the beginning of the video before my voice comes in, but I can't help but notice that full front flip from the duck and roll. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan and I am excited to bring you the finals. Golden duck and roll included in it as these eight fast cars bested their eight in each group in the first eight videos. Finally come together. Oh, there's the front flip and now duck and roll is backwards and he's not gonna win this one for sure. Oh, he's road blocking. Oh no, he might not even get, oh, oh, and he's not even gonna finish third. Duck and roll starting terribly. These eight cars are going to battle it out. And we'll see who's the best of the best. Making it here is hard enough. So any car that makes it here deserves the praise. Of a true warrior on the track. Unfortunately though, not all warriors are created equal. As you can see, duck and roll barely looked like he was rolling at all to get to the end there. Duck and roll with one, Mach 4 with five, Delilah and Ford GT in there in the center. And we all remember all these cars, just dominant performances, smart racing to bring them here, and now they're up against each other. I'm trying to see if there's anything from the duck and roll here. It doesn't seem to be the fastest car out here. He's going to have trouble making it to the end with the first place. Here he goes. Maybe something a little bit better does get out in front, but oh, struggle again. And he'll get a couple extra points. And this time the Ford GT will fall to last place. The eyes on that Mach 4. Still strong. Mach 4 almost uh, ran in with disaster there. Knocked his wheel into the rail, but uh, was able to at least face front after. GT crawls out. First two races already gone. 5-5 five, five from the Mach 4. Two will advance from this... Uh, situation so still chances for any of the other vehicles to make a stand in the finals here we go that can roll now in lane three delilah here in lane one mach four sitting in lane two on those outside hairpins duck and roll lagging once again where's the speed from the duck and roll non-existent big jump from the delilah mach four pushing through there snaps against the side couple times duck and roll is stopped delilah will win he gets going He also rode the side there for a second. He corrected himself just in time. Unfortunate for the deck and roll. It's just, it's just unfortunate. Really sad time to see him kind of crawl down to the end after all the performance that we saw from this vehicle in the first video. Only four points, so really actually impossible for him to win at this point, considering that the other two leaders have uh, 13 points and 10 respectively. So the duck and roll is going to unfortunately retire from this one, even if he can manage a win here. But it looks like that's going to be a struggle as well. Ford GT, big jump, Delilah pushing through, no, around the hairpin. Ford GT still managing out in front, and the Ford GT may have a shot here. Calculate those points. Three, one, two, five. He may come up just short. Mach, uh, Mach four, definitely. Getting out to the next round. And deservingly, what a fast car. I think that uh, Delilah just came in with enough points to push past 11. Yeah, and she will advance. Yeah, there we go. Delilah, 13. Mach 4, 15. Second group. Second group of the finals. What a range of wonderful cars. Carbide, that was the, the name. I always, I always fall short on that name. Speed Racer is... Uh, 
received the more unique name of the Hydra Cell. Mach 5 in there, still, Formula Solar. And right now it's the... Oh my god, the Carbide is going for a swim! I was about to commend the Carbide and quite the speed, but wheels got caught up. And the Carbide is gone. Carbide sitting at the bottom there, wondering what the hell happened. I mean, <laughs> this, this was no... I mean, this was no slow vehicle. I mean, this this was really unusual. Hydrocell and then the Formula Solar, but hopefully the Carbide can pick himself up and come out strong once again. Carbide with one point. Let's see if there's a comeback in his bones. Carbide gets lane one here, so we're going to deal with some inside lanes. Here we go. Carbide. Hydrocell right on the outside next to him. Formula Solar and over there the Mach 5. Here comes the Carbide fast again. Big jump. Makes it this time and beautiful landing way out in front of these cars who all mingle with each other. And the Carbide's going to reverse the curse quickly. Well done. And I will say, that's a lot harder than it looks. To come out from a complete failure, but really, there's, he's got to be scratching his head. I mean, in whatever way a car can. Wondering how the heck that happened, because really, he was doing everything right, and it just uh, looked like supernaturally all the speed drained from his tires. Comes out, forgets it all, wins the race just like nothing ever happened. That is true mental power. A warrior on the track beyond that what I could imagine. Here we go, Carbide once again taking outside lines. Mach 5 here on the inside, big jump and a wonderful landing. Carbide still in there trying to draft to the inside and maybe outside, no, he's stuck behind. Leader of the line, the Mach 5. Right in second, Formula Solar. And on that conga line, Carbide got stuck with only two points and stratified well. These cars have a tough final race coming up. A little bit of follow the leader there. 535 for the Mach 5. He's got 13. So he's, I think he's a lock. What about the car by? 512, that's 8. And 223, that's 7 for the Solar. So it's close. I just saw a little bit lower. Solar out to a big lead right now, though. Carbide trying to work his way around the speed racer. Cannot. The Hydrocell just in the way, and the Mach 5 might have taken the race. Oh, man. Carbide is out. Not, I predicted that car would win. As much as I wanted the duck and roll to win, I, I really predicted the carbide and just could not make it work in the finals here. Mach 5 will be going on Formula Solar as well. And carbide comes up short. Hydra Cell as well. Finals, here we go. Best four cars from all of these 64. Remember, it was eight videos where eight cars were in each video. So here we go. These are the top four. Let's see who can manage. And as it said, the top four will move on to that final finals with uh, partnering with Diecast Racing TV. Subscribe to that channel and check out. Oh my god! <laughs> Delilah's gone, and that's going to be a tough start. Bono Solar can't get out with that metal lock with Mach 5. And, well, there's a Mach 4 breaking away. I mean, that is a mess if I've ever seen one. I mean, these are the finalists, right? Anyway, so Diecast Racing TV, again, they have the parallel tournament going on. Their finals is going on soon or maybe even now at this point. So definitely check them out, subscribe, and you will see four cars in their finals of their final video that will race against these four right here in the ultimate finals, where not just 64, but double that, 128 cars, the best eight of those, We'll race each other and decide upon that the best one of the 128. What a group to narrow from. So definitely worth check out and prepare for that big final. So Lila makes the jump this time and a spin from the Mach 5. Mach 4 also locked in there. Trouble. Formula Solar. No dice. And that's going to be only one for the Formula Solar. And I will say that Delilah made the right comeback. 
a good one and timed well. Needed to come back with a five after, and he really did what the carbide did. Landed in the water, shook it off, and is like, this is not the time to mope around. And she's still in it. Two races in. Run it again. 5-2-1-5. Mach 4 Delilah still on the top here. Mach 5 Formula Solar not out of it. It's all about this third race. This third race will show who's going to start to pull away. Because right now any car's in it. Formula Solar needs a fast race this time. And so does the Mach 5. Looks like both of them are going to get out to that top one and two. Big jump for the Delilah. She's going to take back second place. Here comes the Formula Solar backwards and slow. And the Mach 5 will now take that triple threat position. Formula Solar, an awful jump. Look at how he lands here. Front wheels, but sideways and spins right out of the jump. Not good. Right initial form, but uh, his movement, his momentum with the landing was not well done. Well, there you go. We're in three races. Mach 5 with 10 points. He's in the threat position. He's got the easiest chance to the win here. What else can happen? Delilah with eight, though, really still going for nine. Still has a shot, so keep an eye on her. Same with Mach 4 with eight. Still a shot there. Formula Solar going for it as well. If he can get out there, maybe if the Mach 5 lags behind. No, the Mach 5's still in there. Going past the Formula Solar, and there you go. Mach 5 takes it to the end. What a way to drive the nail into the coffin. Mach 5 takes that outside line, drafts for a second, and I think, I think if we get a freeze cam, Mach 5 stretched that nose just further. And there you go, Mach 5 will advance from this one. Finalist, winner of these 64 fastest of the fast. Subscribe and await the finals with Diecast Racing TV. Thank you guys for watching. Races and fun.